Hi, thanks for joining us for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. Happy Thanksgiving. This is our final episode of the year. So today, we're going to answer some of the most frequently asked questions we get at extension offices around the area for fall and winter. If you have a lawn, a vegetable garden, or ornamental plants around your home, you want to stay tuned. Frequently asked questions. That's just ahead on the family plot, gardening in the Mid-South. So stay with us. This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for the family plot, gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Tanya Ashworth. Tanya is a UT Extension agent in Fayette County. Booker T. Lee is here. Booker is the Tipton County Extension Director. And Mr. D is with us today. Hello, Hello Chris. Yeah. I'm going to have you in. This is going to be fun. Good to be here, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> this time of year, we're getting questions at the Extension Office about getting our lawns and gardens ready for winter. Insects and critters are preparing for winter, too. So we're getting a lot of calls about that as well. And since some questions have a way of cropping up year after year, we've assembled our most asked questions concerning vegetables, lawns, and ornamentals. So let's get started with ornamentals. Okay. Oh, Tanya, can mm -hmm. you help the viewers out today? <laughs> sure, sure. Well, good. Here's our first question. Okay. okay. Should I prune or fertilize my shrubs now? No, we don't really recommend okay. that. Um, the plants are try trying to go dormant, get ready to go dormant, get ready to kind of slow down for the winter. Okay. And when you put out fertilizer or you prune, you're encouraging growth. And so you don't really want to encourage growth right now. You want to wait until probably the spring. Okay. Mm -hmm. So no pruning back our azaleas or anything like no, that right no, now? No, okay. not now. In okay. fact, for azaleas, you don't want to prune them until right after they bloom okay. in the spring. Okay. Here's our second question. My plants have black spots on the leaves. And I didn't write this question because mine have them too. <laughs> Should I spray them with a fungicide? It's kind of the same deal. Um, a lot of our fungal diseases will, will really show up right here towards the end of the growing season. And since most of your things are going to go deciduous and lose their leaves anyway, there's no need to spray. One thing I would recommend doing though is to remove the source of inoculum for the okay. next year. Um, after they lose those leaves, you want to rake them up and, and get them away from your plants. And then in the spring, if you notice an issue with black spots, then you can always start a preventative fungicide program then. But I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't waste my spray right now. Okay. Um, you know, and, and not every black spot on your leaf is necessarily a fungus. Um, I had somebody bring in a holly to my office the other week and um, the problem actually was scale insects. Oh, okay. And the scale insects secrete like a sticky substance yes. that causes uh, sooty mold to grow. So in that instance, you might have black on your leaves, but if it's not spots, it's just kind of all over. Yeah. It, it may be scales. So look for uh, small little disc shaped okay. flat insects and, and treat those with oil. Okay, mm -hmm. that's a good description. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. Now mm -hmm. let me ask you about those, uh, those leaves. So we need to get those leaves up but don't compost them, right? Oh no, okay. don't compost them. You you don't want to uh, let those over winter. You want to okay. put them in a plastic bag and take them someplace else. Okay. Yeah. Or as Mr. D would say, double bag them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then throw them away. Yeah. Okay. Here's our next question. Okay. Can I use my fall leaves for mulch, and do I need to chop them up somehow first? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, okay. People ask me all the time if I want to use my fall leaves. Do I need to do something special to them? And I always say, not really. You know. I use fall leaves at my house every year for mulch, mm -hmm. um, and as long as you have small, kind of small leaves, like I have water oak, um, willow oak, or maple leaves, anything like that, you know, not like a great big huge sycamore leaf maybe, but any kind of a small leaf is fine, just rake it right into the bed. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds good. All right, the next question, have I waited too late to plant my bulbs? 
No, I don't think so. You can okay. still plant your early spring blooming bulbs. Um, I usually plant mine uh, right before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. so uh, I would get out there pretty quickly and do it, but it's not too late to plant things like, you know, Galanthus or Snowdrop. Okay. Um, tulips, even though they don't reliably come back every time yeah. for us, um, I, still, I still like to plant them. Um, your iris, uh, daffodils even, and hyacinths, crocus, you can plant all of those. Okay, so it's not too late. Mm -mm. Okay. Just make sure you plant them right side up. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's right. That's <laughs> Don't most important. bury them too deep. Yeah, and okay. they should be fine. All right. Next question. How can I save my annuals for next year? Okay, well, hmm. if you have some annuals that you want to try to save, you can do that. Um, usually by cuttings. Uh, things like coleus are really easy to root. So yeah. you would just take a cutting from the top portion of your plant and you want to break off the very tip, the very top part of that piece of coleus um, to break what we call apical dominance yeah. so that it'll branch. So you want a piece maybe this tall of your coleus, okay. break off the little top, put it in some water and you know um, while you're at it, you know, do six or seven of them and then they'll root very easily just in water in your house and then okay. you can put them out next spring. And some things like impatience will receive themselves right. right there in your bed. So if you don't mulch heavily or at all, then you can get impatience to come back, volunteer from, from the seed. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we do use big words on this show. <laughs> Apical dominant. <laughs> we use big words from time Sorry. to time. Yeah, that's why. All right. Uh, next question is this. How do I care for my tropical plants inside my house? for the winter? This is a good question because in my neighborhood, I see a lot of people with banana plants. Yes. Yeah, so. Well, if you have tropicals that you want to hold over, um, you can certainly do that by bringing them inside. I would say look for insects. You don't want to bring an insect issue into your house. Uh, if you have insects on your plants, then you can use a, a horticultural soap, like okay. safer soap or something like that to clean those with. And really, um, Dishwashing liquid uh, on a sponge works good to clean off those okay. leaves, yeah, for tropicals. Um, a lot of people think that they need to repot them, not necessarily. Uh, tropicals can go a very long time without okay. needing to be repotted, several years sometimes. Um, you can also prune them back some, especially mm -hmm. if they're big and you don't have a lot of room in your house to put them. Um, you want to back off on the water, okay. but don't just stick them in the garage and not water them all winter. <laughs> right. They're going to need some water. The roots are still alive, and so they are going to need some water, but um, they don't need to be as moist as they did when they were outside. You know, try to put them somewhere where there's plenty of light, right, as right. much light as you can give them, and they should be fine. Okay, so put them in the garage would be okay? Cause... Probably so, yeah. If okay. you don't have enough room in your house or you don't have a greenhouse or anything like that, then your garage is your next best bet. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Tanya, thanks for that good information. All right, we have a viewer question. There's a spider that we have to identify. And Mr. D, can you help us out with this identification as you look on the screen? Look at that. Isn't it pretty? Yeah, <laughs> just hang it out. A big old critter. Good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a pretty, pretty little spider there. <laughs> All right, Mr. D, what do we think that is? That's a what, orb yes. spider? Is that, is that orb, what we call it? Orb, or yeah. weaver spider. Yeah, that's a beneficial. It catches all kinds of flying insects. It's okay. A, you actually, yeah, you want that in your garden. It's not a bad thing. Right. It's a good yeah. thing. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Mosquitoes and, and things like that. I can get trapped in that web. And, yeah. <laughs> I my and you will. <laughs> you know, you walk into it every once in a while, but they, it's amazing how fast they can build that web back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I actually read up a, a, a little information about the, the weeb uh, the web spider, uh, they actually produce a web every day and they consume yeah. the old web. Huh. They, yeah. they rest for about an hour or so and then produce another one. They stay busy. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah, it really it is. Good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like a vicious circle there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. That's pretty good, though. But if you run through one yeah, and it kind of gets attached to your body, your screen, oh, yeah. I've done it. <laughs> I know I would. I know my daughter would. <laughs> yeah, she's got a spider. All right, so that's your orb, web, or weaver spider. Okay. All right, Booker. All right. Let's see if we can help our viewers out with our lun. We are trying to. We are trying to. Yeah, we are trying to do the best we can. I know we will. Hope. Okay. Yeah. Here's our first question. Do I need to remove the leaves off my lun? Yes, yes, Chris, you got probably a lot of leaves on your lun right now, and the leaves are falling off the tree now. Okay. You can do two things with them. I like to uh, run over to the lawnmower and try to cut them up some. If not, you have a padded down there with okay. all the water and moisture that we have during the winter month. They could cause a fungus disease for the next year. 
because all the moisture hole in there and not letting it dry out. Right. You get those leaves off there, you need to run the lawn across and cut them up. Also, you can get them and put them in your compost pile. Okay. And that'd be a good compost thing for your leaves all one alone. Okay. And use them in your vegetable garden. But get them off your lawn this time of the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And don't put them on the curb. Don't put them on the curb. No, yeah, that, I see that, people bagging them up, putting them on the curb. That is really right. good. Come on. They throwing really good nutrient away Ow. that they can use in the lawn, in the flower bed, or in the garden. That's right. And that soil will work real good and they should when they start doing that. So right. don't put them on the curb. No. Use those good leaves there. That's right. <laughs> Shred them up. It's called recycling. Recycling, composting. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's your next question. How late can I apply a broadleaf herbicide to my lawn, which is a good question yeah, we get often. Yeah, we kind of, in, in, in November now, and it, it got mm -hmm. a temperature thing really on that herbicide, and you probably spray it now, it's probably not gonna do really good on your uh, weed. And what I recommend now is, is put me a pre-merge down right. on my lawn, cause this will keep the weed from germinating. It's not gonna kill what already out there, right. but it will prevent the other from coming up this winter and also in the springtime. So you might wanna do it again in March. Yeah, broadleaf now, probably not going to do any good. Right. You just are wasting your money and just save that <laughs> money and, and then use it on something else and then they on, on a pre-merge. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's our next question. Should I fertilize my lawn in the fall? And, and I guess for that question, yeah. it depends on what kind of grass yeah, yeah. you have. Don't you got you warm it? season grass and right. you know that's zoysia grass and Bermuda grass. I wouldn't add no nitrogen fertilizer to it now because like Tonya said a few minutes ago, you don't want to give it no extra growth this time of the year. Okay. We might have some another couple of warm days, but it's gonna get cold quick. You know, jump back down to cold and it could damage that grass. Okay. But phosphate and potassium is really good for your lung this time of the year based on a soil test. It'll give you soil good strong root system for the winter months okay. and also protect the disease problem. But nitrogen fertilizer, no. And nitrogen fertilizer is gonna be the first number on the back of a fertilizer. Right. You don't have three numbers on there. Nitrogen is the first number. No first number on your fertilizer now. Okay. Use now. the second two okay. in there. Okay. Now you got fescue lawn. That's right. a cool season grass. It begin to grow now. That's right. You can add nitrogen fertilizer to that because uh, it, that based on the soil, so you can add some to that. Now if you're growing now, you're cutting it now. And I'm so glad I don't have fescue. <laughs> <laughs> Me <laughs> well, too. I've been cutting grass all, I've been cutting grass all summer long. Yeah, I, I uh, want to break on my lawn now. But that's I, right. My Bermuda's going dormant. Man, going I want to go dormant I too. I want to go dormant too. That's I want right. to get in the house and do something there every day long. <laughs> all right. Okay, here's our next question. How much lime should I put on my lawn? Chris, adding lime to your soil, and you just can't go out there and look and say, I want to add lime to it. Based on a soil test. For most lawn grasses, you need a soil pit between 6.0 and 6.5. All right. And the only way you can do that is through a soil test. And we do have soil box at our office. I know they have some in Chevy we County. Do. We have some in Tipton County. Yeah, Fayette they County. Fayette County. They can come out there and get some and I do a soil test. And this is a good time to do a soil test because if you need to add lime to it, you can add enough while the grass is going dormant. And this year, when you're ready for that, you that lime and it's already there called lime help the other nutrients be using the soil. Okay. If you know if you got a lot of phosphorus metallic and no lime is good, it's not gonna work good. So lime is the most important thing to me okay. in a long grass. Sure. But do a soil test this time of year and it's a great time to do that now. You send it off to UT, probably take you a week to get it back and add your lime to the soil, they'll tell you how much to add to you and get it right. All right. Y'all yeah. know what I'm about to say. Why well, guess soil, soil test. test. <laughs> there you go. All right, here's our next question. When do I aerate my warm season grasses. So we're talking about Bermuda and Zoysia. Bermuda and grass, that's okay. no have in, in, in West Tennessee. Bermuda grass and Zoysia grass okay. are warm season grass. I like to aerate just before that grass start growing. Okay. And that's probably in May. Okay. And no problem, I, would do, I wouldn't do it now because you don't want to expose those root system to the winter months. So wait until May before you start aerating. You know, just wait and hold off now. And because it's going dormant now, okay. no, no man dormant, is going dormant already. So just wait, just wait a while until nature in, 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 in May when it start to grow. Right. That's when you do your warm season grass. For your fescue grass, you can do that now if you need a problem with it because it's growing right now. Right, it, sure. it'll, it'll protect itself over that. Okay, in there. and it'll recover. Recover, yeah, yeah. it'll recover that, so that's good. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, last question about lawns. Is it too late to plant fescue seeds? Oh, we're in November now. Now it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a cool season grass, and we recommend you plant it early in September and October. I wouldn't put none down right now because if the cold weather come in, it, need, it might not be able to germinate. If it do germinate right now, it's probably killed by the cold weather. So I just try to hold off right now. I probably hold off right now okay. and over and overseed again in March sometime. 
Overseed in March. Yeah, because okay. we know he's got the soil beginning to get a little warmest there for it to germinate. And we just hope some of them come in too fast on it <laughs> and, 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 and kill it. But I, I wouldn't do it right now. I'll okay. wait, I'll wait until, until March now. Okay. Yeah, because that's good. And yeah. so that's what you would do. That's what I do, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do with that then. So, but I, I, I don't have fast too, but, I, but I, <laughs> that's the time do. you do that. But uh, it's a good, pretty, cool season grass, and the folks that like to work, and, and I got a lot of shade trees and stuff right. like that that's growing there. It's, it's, it's good grass. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, most people now want green grass year round. Yeah. Ooh, man, you know, I'm glad. That used to be the case some years ago, but I'm glad I don't you want know, that. <laughs> more and more people are calling because they, yeah, they, they want, want fescue. Yeah, they want perennial rye grass. That's something sure. they want to tell them older grass. They want to do that now to have that green grass year round. And they like, I like for my grass to go dormant, <laughs> but it's trying to rejuvenate itself and, and keep that nutrient, save that nutrient in the soil. But okay. you don't have to winterize your lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep yeah. the lawnmower going. Yeah, you're out. Yeah, man, don't, don't say that. Ooh, that scared me right now. <laughs> give a lawnmower. Well, Booker needs to go dormant anyway because he cuts his yard twice a week. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. something I exercise. I, I get some exercise by cutting that grass and everything. Yeah, I need a break. All right. I, need a break. <laughs> yeah, I need a break from that grass. <laughs> All right, we appreciate that, Booker. <laughs> All right, we have another viewer uh, question. And Mr. D, this is uh, a, another picture. We want some identification here, okay? So what do you think that is? We all know what that is. <laughs> we know what that is. Yeah. If you grew up on a farm, you uh -huh. know what that is. That's a, an American persimmon mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to the uh, orientals. The oriental persimmons uh, we grow, we have to plant, and they're a lot bigger. But that's one you don't eat green. If, no. if, yeah. if that's not <laughs> completely that. right. Now, if that's really, really ripe, that's very good. That's a sweet fruit. It's fine to eat it. But if it's just a little bit green, you will learn what pucker means. <laughs> yes, you, you will pucker up. Mm, good, but uh, that's a very, very uh, good wildlife food. Deer, mm -hmm. deer, and, and, uh, possums and raccoons love, love persimmons. Yeah. And we also, we graft the oriental persimmon oh, yeah. onto the American persimmon, oh, I believe, right. because it's native to this area and it's tougher. Okay. And, uh, but uh, very, so, very common. So you're American persimmon. That's right. Mm. Yeah. Full of uh, vitamins and minerals. Oh, yeah. Oh, good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. I mean, when I'm out hunting, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll just park myself under a Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're very we good. We do it when we were coming up growing up in the country. We'd have over some of Yeah, just don't eat too many of them. Yeah, don't uh, yeah. Many. yeah. I've done that. All right, Mr. D, you ready? Yes, let's do it. Okay, let's see if we can help our viewers out with this. Here's the first question I think my apple trees have rust. What do I spray to control it? Well, as Tanya said on the uh -huh. ornamentals, you don't spray anything right now. Uh, if you have cedar apple rust on, on the apple trees, that's very, very common. Uh, don't worry about it now. Just remove those leaves when they fall off the tree and, and go and get them out of there. Uh, next year, you need to follow a regular uh, spray schedule with, with those apples if, you've had, if you have a history of a problem with cedar apple rust. And Immunox mm. is the product that's recommended if you have... Uh, if you have uh, cedar apple rust. I think I have a label here. And uh, the active ingredient in the Immunox is myclobutanil. Myclobutanil. <laughs> and uh, let me put that up here. That's, uh, that's the, uh, the label. Okay. And that's out of the Red Book. Sure. Actually, the Red Book directs us to a uh, regional insect and disease control guide for apples. So it's really, uh, this is what all over the southeast okay. United States, Immunox is what's recommended for cedar apple rust. Okay, cedar um, apple rust. But uh, that ought to do the trick. And, mm -hmm. and uh, on the other the other thing you can do is you can go out and you can cut every cedar tree down <laughs> uh, in a, about a yeah. five mile radius. <laughs> what I think about it. <laughs> because this disease is part, yeah. 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 part of its life cycle on a, on a, a cedar tree and uh, part of its life cycle on, on an apple tree. You take out all of the cedar trees within several miles, you know, upwind or downwind, right. and, and, you know, you'll be okay there. So it pretty much spreads by wind for the most part? spread by wind, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, there you have it. So uh, get out your ax. <laughs> There's a lot of trees to no, cut. It's up to your neighborhood. All right, here's the next question. Something is eating small holes in my mustard green leaves. What could be doing that, and how do I control it? What are your thoughts on that, Mr. D? That's probably flea beetle. That's what I thought. Say? Flea exactly. beetle. Uh, mm -hmm. And we've got a product that will take care of that. Seven, carbaryl okay. is what's recommended. Flea beetles have chewing mouth parts. They're little bitty chewing mouth parts, but they have chewing mouth parts. And carbaryl is the product that's uh, uh, recommended. And this did come out of the Red Book. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. 
three tablespoons per gallon of water. I'll take, mm. Repeat up to four times, but not more than once every seven days. Mm -hmm. There is a 14-day, um, two-week interval or a waiting period before you harvest. So okay. don't spray this right before you cut the mustard. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, always read the label. Mm -hmm. Always. Follow the label. That's okay. right. All right, here's our next question. Oh, this is a giddy. Does using lime really repel snakes? I've heard that growing up in the country. No. No. Uh -oh. No. <laughs> no quit. Emphatically, no. No. No, no did <laughs> uh, You know, I was interested. I, we, uh, in all of our uh, extension offices, I think we have the handbook called Prevention and Control of Wildlife Damage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we've got, got those, and now they're online. But uh, the person who wrote the uh, section on non-poisonous snakes is our own Jim Byford. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is used nationwide, but uh, Jim Byford is a uh, former dean of agriculture up at UT Martin, wow. a good friend of mine. But uh, I'm going to read you, I'm going to quote what he says okay. uh, about repellents. <laughs> okay. He says, several snake repellents have been promoted, but none are consist consistently effective. And, you know, that's pretty much true. I mean, you can use the, the moth balls, yeah. moth crystals, naphthalene, paradichlorobenzene crystals, and things like that. And... Maybe get a little help, but but uh, no. not. Don't count on it. Uh, glue boards uh, work pretty good. Whoa. Sticky sticky boards, and you may need to attach several to a sheet of plywood. You know, like screw them down, and and then have you a <laughs> hole in that sheet of oh, plywood where you can take your piece of wire and hook it okay. on the board and move it and. <laughs> you know, that's pretty good for inside. Don't use glue boards outside because you'll catch other things. Yeah, other, other <laughs> critters. Yeah, as but, Tanya uh, eyes raised yeah. when you say yeah. it, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, hey, we can just leave it alone, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's going to slither <laughs> away attached to yeah. that glue board no. still. Look at that glue board going across <laughs> the, the floor there. Oh, man. But once, oh, you, once you catch him on the glue board and you take him outside, you can use PAM, vegetable oil, right. to release them oh, from yeah. the glue board. Anything that you catch on the glue board that you want to release. Okay. You know, just uh, vegetable oil. Uh, I didn't, my goodness, I that didn't means know you that, have yeah. to pick that glue board up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The snake attached. Snake All right, it. there you have it. Here's our next question. Mm. I saw a woodpecker pecking away at my maple tree. Will the hose kill the tree? No. No, there's another no. No, no the, hose, the hose will not kill the tree. They'll, they'll, they'll stay on the tree and they'll get bigger. <laughs> right. And you know, they'll, they'll uh, as the tree grows, they'll get a little bit bigger. But uh, no, that, that probably a, say a sap sucker. Yeah, I would say a yellow belly sap sucker on probably. That. The one, especially if the holes are evenly spaced right. and in, in a row, yeah, and they're, a row. they're feeding on the sap in the tree, and it's it's probably not gonna it's not gonna hurt the tree. And it, it, make sure that it's a woodpecker that's creating the hole. Yeah. If you have a borer, now there are maple borers yeah. that that. Uh, can damage the tree and you'd need to treat uh, with, a, with an insecticide, but uh, it's totally different. I mean, the woodpecker holes are evenly spaced, you know, usually, oh, you can uh, tell. And, and, and the boars will have uh, frass and, mm -hmm. and sap and mm -hmm. excrement coming out, you know, sawdust coming out, things like that coming out of the hole, and uh, you won't have as many holes. With a woodpecker, you usually have quite a, quite a few holes. Mm -hmm. This is true. All right, here's our last question. Some critter is nibbling on the leaves of my lettuce. The plants are still intact, but the leaves are clean cut. Any idea what that is? I had a couple come to mind. I yeah, thought I've maybe got, rabbit. Got, uh, rabbit. Rabbit's yeah. the first thing that comes yeah. to my mind. A rabbit, <laughs> uh, deer, uh, cutworm. I, I don't know whether a cutworm will climb up a plant and cut off a leaf. I've only heard of cutworms yeah. cutting them off even at the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's probably but a rabbit. Yeah, rabbit. Like I thought rabbit. Yeah. Groundhog, you know, rabbit, you know. <laughs> probably a rabbit doing that. Yeah, because the deer would probably pull it out of the ground, yeah. wouldn't they? Uh, they, they don't leave it, it would they leave it intact? Yeah, they they, they okay. would bite bite it mm -hmm. off. They'd bite the top side of it. Mm -hmm. You know. And, and we've got a lot of deer, a lot of deer in this urban yeah. area. But okay. uh, you would usually see deer tracks mm -hmm. around. Yeah. You know, look yeah. for tracks yeah. and yeah. droppings and things like that. Yeah. But uh, again, if if you have a rabbit, uh, get you a live animal trap and 
you know, try to catch it. Do you have to bait the trap for the rabbit? Yeah, but I'd put uh, lettuce in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can bait the yeah. lettuce in there. <laughs> yeah. Since he's already uh, chewing yeah. on it. Huh? Yeah, there yeah. you go. Save him some time. <laughs> yeah, put him in the trap. Oh, man, that rascally yeah. rabbit. Yeah. All right, thank you, Mr. D. Well, that's all we have time for today. And since this is our final episode for this season, I want to thank all of our viewers for watching and sending us your gardening questions. And thanks to all of our guests for sharing their expertise. Extension agents from around the area, master gardeners, and all other horticulture experts who've been on to help answer your gardening questions. We're going dormant for the winter months, but we'll be back next year to help get your garden going again. In the meantime, don't forget, county extension agents are there to answer questions year round. So don't hesitate to give us a call. I'm Chris Cooper, and I'll see you next year on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. From everyone at WKNO and UT Extension Service, have a safe and joyful holiday season and a happy new year. Thank you. Be safe. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center, in Germantown since 1943, and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.